looks so miserable. We can't hold this forever. You must be a pretty bad doctor to let a profitable patient slip away at the age of 55. I shall lose neither patient nor friend if you are only sensible and rest. You can't fool me, Manetta. Once my eye is closed tonight, they'll never open again on any of you. That's why I've asked you all here to give you my final instructions. I've appointed Havelock trustee of the estate. Silver will be the boy's guardian. Also an executor. It's all in here, signed and witnessed yesterday. Everything except a few small legacies goes to the boy. In the event of John's death, everything goes to his cousin, June Lansdowne, living somewhere in Canada. You can find particulars of her amongst the family papers. There are some legacies for all of you. Though I've probably been over-generous. Don't fiddle with me. Tell Havelock to see that the real Selford jewels go into the vault with me and not imitations. And if he doesn't fasten all the seven locks of that tomb, I'll come out and haunt the lot of you. Give me that box. Open it, Doctor. Are the seven keys there, Manetta? Yes. Hadlock will have full charge of them. He may be a bit of a fool, but he's trustworthy. Don't you agree, Manetta? Absolutely. Now, please, do me a favor and drink this. Where's the boy? He is with his tutor. I want to see them. As soon as I've had a final word with you, about the seven keys. I'm saying goodbye, John. I'm going on a pretty long journey. It'll be some time before we meet again. But I want no tears, no fuss. Understand? Chin up and smile. Come on. Goodbye, Father. That's right. Goodbye, Silver. See that he makes a better job of his life than I have made of mine. Now we let your father sleep, shall we?
Yeah? Yes. A man threw this out of the window. What do you mean? I was delivering near the Norgate nursing home, and he threw it out of the window with a ten bob note. It had John Owen's address on it. So I bought it here. Good day, miss. Dago Band conductor had nothing to do with it. I saw him first. It's a note from Silver. Now, don't tell me. Let me guess. Who'd have a name like that? I know. The waiter. The dark one. The wear of waiter, darling. You never get any change out of those guys. Now, you ought to remember Silver. He's the one that fetched you back $1,500 for your share in the trip. You mean that crazy guy who wrote here in Quebec? Listen. Dear Miss Lansdowne, on receipt of this message, come immediately to the above address and demand to see me. They will not dare to refuse you if you say who you are. I must tell you that the secret of the door with seven locks before I die. And I have little time to spare. Come without delay. Yours, Louis Silva. P.S. Put the key in a safe place and on no account bring it with you. Do you think we ought to go to the police? I don't want to be mixed up with the police. My father's mayor of Backwood County. There seems to be something very unusual about this key. There's nothing unusual about a guy sending you his last key. Did he say he wants you to come up and see his etching? Give me that towel, will you please? Now, here's a man in fear of his life, and you make jokes about him. They will not dare to refuse you. Who can they be? Say, what is this? Puzzle Corner? Well, I'm going to find out for myself. Oh, not without your Aunt Glenda. Listen, I'm an old etching viewer myself, and I know all the tricks. He'll be wearing George Rat's pajamas, and the etchings will be in the bedroom. Lansdowne girl. Now we may learn where the key is. Supposing Silver talks too much, I'll be listening in with Craig. But that killer, you're crazy. Do you want... <sighs> I've had a terrible experience. My health has broken down. I'm losing my strength. Oh, I'm so glad you were able to come before it's too late. I feel if I can only tell you the truth, I don't care what happens. Of whom are you afraid? I'll tell you everything presently. They won't interfere while you're here. What have you done with the key I sent you? Someone's looking after it for me. I hope it's someone you can trust. That key is worth a fortune to certain people. I kept it in that old Bible there. For ten years, Miss Lansdowne, something has haunted me, tortured my conscience. I was forced into a terrible crime, something concerning the door with the seven locks. The door with seven locks? Discard the key I sent you. I'll try to get it from you. That door conceals the crime. But where are the other keys? They're with... the matron. What is it you want? He's dead, Silver. In there. He's been shot. Silver, I don't understand. 
May I ask how you got in here? In room number's been killed. Here. This room, you say? Yes. You're quite sure? Yes. The picture, quite sure, and the book. You must have a remarkable imagination, Miss Stone. But I saw it. You realize what extraordinary things you're saying? Who are you? But it's the truth. He was lying dead in that bed. Who was lying dead? Mr. Silver, the man I came to see. You must be dreaming. Oh, no. You see, I got a letter from him this morning. Oh, have you got it with you? Yes. This seems genuine enough. That only adds to the mystery. You see, there are no patients here. Unfortunately, this nursing home has been a failure. I'm closing it down today. There's no one here but myself. Well, this is preposterous. I quite agree. Look, a man showed me into this room. I'm beginning to think you must be a mental case. I think in your own interest, you ought to see a doctor. I shall go to the police. Scotland Yard. And when that terrible woman suggested I was mad, I just ran. What could I do? Or did I dream at all? Shall I stick a pin in you? Supposing the police don't believe us. Where do you say we were going? Scotland Yard. Well, let's see. What do I know about Scotland? Strong and silent, aren't they? Now, I like my men weak and talkative. And if they talk, they sometimes say things they're sorry for. So I got my diamond. I hoped you'd reconsider your decision, Martin. I'm sorry, sir. Well, why don't you give your aunt's legacy to the police orphanage and go back to your office? You see, sir, I've decided to uh, travel. Yes, um, to improve my ideas. Oh, a tip. Don't lecture and don't write reminiscences. Nobody wants to hear them or read them. Off you go. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Hey! Wake up, you dope. I was concentrating. You call me, sir. Be respectful to your superior. Please bury on my foot. I've resigned. I'm a free man, Andy. Oh? Hmm? I've got a small-time copper with a large liver. Oh, yes? You're plain lazy because you're too fat. And you're too fat because you're plain lazy. It's a vicious circle. Well, never mind. From now on, it won't worry me. You're going to buy a country house and be a gent, eh? Ride the hounds and take duchesses out to dinner. What a life for a grown man. Oh, stop it, Andy. I'm beginning to weaken already. Don't make it any worse. Otherwise, I'll stay here and teach you how to promotion. I can see the whole picture. A fool and his money, a blonde and her mother, and another poor sap ends up broke, beaten, and bewildered. Oh, no, Andy. No woman's going to ruin my life until I'm too old to resist. Women are like tiger cats. They ought to be caged at 16 and shot at 20. Come in. Young lady to see you, sir. She says it's urgent. Tell her the last property office is over the river. She says it's murder, sir. Somebody's poisoned her cat. Bring her in. Oh, well. Before the old frump starts telling a boring story, I'll vermouth. Goodbye, Andy. Remember me at Christmas. Miss Jill Lansdowne, sir. Inspector Sneed? Yes. Uh, no, no. Oh, I was told to ask for Inspector Sneed. I'm Inspector Sneed. What can I do for you, lady? I've just seen how... I've had a terrible experience. A man's been murdered. Where? By whom? Mr. Martin, I'll take charge of this matter. Sure, but I'll help. Now, ladies, tell me all about it. Well, about half an hour ago, I went to hospital here. Were you expecting a note from this man, Silver? The one with the key? No. It was a complete surprise. I thought it was from a band conductor who was trying to get off with me the way they all do, but... Do you mind leaving this matter to us? Sorry, I'm only trying to help. Give me Martin. Yes, Inspector. You're quite sure he was shot? He must have been. I saw him clutch at his chest when the bullet struck him. There was no report? No. 
But I heard a, a sort of a dull plop. Silent, sir. I want you to come up right away. Tell a squad car to stand by. I'm glad I didn't go in. I just hate to see a man wasted like that. There aren't enough to go around as it is. Sorry. Go to the Norgate Nursing Home, Earl's Court, right away. Make a complete search. It looks like a murder charge. And you'd better be armed. <laughs> Oh, Inspector, if you're not wanting Miss Lansdowne right now, I'll go to the flat and inspect that key. You'll go, but you resign. Uh, yes, I know, but I'd like to help unofficially. You see, I resigned my job this morning. We needn't worry about that. Uh, will you accept my services as advisor and friend? No, well, I'm... Oh, it, uh, I, I might be useful. I'm entirely free. Consider yourself engaged. With thanks. Andy? From now on, I'm Miss Lansdowne's guide, philosopher, and friend. See that she gets a square deal from the double-crossing police. I may need a little advice, too. My mother didn't tell me a thing. Ever frightened by one. <laughs> Glenda likes them to fall easily. <laughs> A burglar in there. Is it a burglar? Are you hurt? Keith. The whole port I have, I hope. <clears throat> it was the key that mattered. Why didn't you get it? for this, and there may be more on the agenda. Now, there. Ouch! Glenda, have you got the brandy? Yes! Oh, you'd better do that. Well, you'll survive, I'm afraid. Well, thanks for the good news. Have you got those letters Silver sent you? Oh, I just remember. I showed the second letter to that matron, which never did it back then. But I've got the first one. In the bedroom. Hello? I'll keep the key meanwhile. Here's your brandy. Thank you. There's one thing that's not going to hurt me. Yes, it's for you. Hello? Oh, hello, Andy. Listen, the solicitor who looks after the self of the state is uh, Edward Havelock. 
Waterloo Place, W1. Perhaps your girlfriend would like to ask him a few questions and let me have the answers. Yeah, well, I'll go and find out the answers myself. Good help. That burglar was the messiest guy. It's gone. What letter? I had it this morning. It's certainly a conspiracy to wipe out all traces of Silver's existence. I am afraid this adventure may land you in considerable danger. When I was 15, I spun a coin. Tails, spoon girl, cooking and knitting. Heads, adventure. Heads, warning. And so, Mr. Havelock, I suggested Miss Lansdowne should come and see you. Miss Lansdowne, I've been trying to get in touch with you for years. Well, you see, my parents died when I was very young. I was brought up by French Canadians in Quebec. I never knew I was connected with the Selfish family. The last of the line is the present Lord Selfish. He was 11 when his father died. I tried to become a father to him when my own son died some years ago. I hope that John Selford would take his place. Oh, he's the most elusive young man in the world. He never spends more than a few days together in one place. At present, I believe he's in Buenos Aires. I'll look up his latest communication. Bring me the Selford file for November. I suppose the Selfords have got a family place here. Yes, uh, Selford Manor, a quiet old place in the heart of the country. The house is let now to an old friend of the late Lord Selford, but should you wish to visit it, I'm sure that he would give you every assistance. Does this mean anything to you? Yes. Looks like one of the seven keys of the Selford tomb. Cross, bring me the Selford keys. Keys, sir? I haven't handled those twice in ten years. Yes, yes, Grayson will show you, now hurry up. When Lord Selford died, he was buried in a tomb with seven locks. I hold all the keys. Where'd you get this? The man Silver gave it to me. It can't be a genuine Selford key. After what you've heard about Silver's murder, can you think of anyone who'd want it so badly, uh, genuine or not? No, it baffles me. You sure it's the right one? Can't you read? Not by day. I went to a night school. I heard that over the radio last week. But in the meantime, I'll do everything I can for you, Miss Lansdowne. Everybody seems to be helping me. The box is empty, sir. What? Look, sir. Who was responsible for them? Well, they were in the care of my uh, chief clerk, Fosco, retired two years ago. When he left, he handed them over to Grayson here. Did you check everything? Well, uh... uh or did I... you take Fosco's word? Yes, Miss Lambert. You see, we were very rushed. Now, the estate will hold you personally responsible. This is a very serious matter. I shall report it to the police. Was Foster trustworthy? Well, absolutely. He came on the most excellent recommendation. You say you held all the keys? Yes, seven. I, I thought they were in that box. Well, this is a terrible matter, Mr. Martin. I, I betrayed my trust. Do you think Foster could have taken them? I don't. Well, why should he? Yes, well, it depends on his moral character. Excuse me. Was there anything of value in the tomb? The Selford Jewel. What's that rumbling noise? We got a flat tire. No, it's only Glenda snoring. So you better have a look at that map. Well, it says, turn left beyond the three feathers, then straight on, and then turn to the right. And that should lead us straight to Salford Manor. Well, we're on the right road, anyway. Something in the middle there. Well, what do we do now? 
better try this one. I don't think so. that one up. Whew. Have I missed something? Welcome to the ancestral home. But no red carpet, no flowers. Yeah. What do they think we are? Getting worried about you. Yeah, we took the wrong turning. Oh, Miss Baker, this is Mr. Havelock, the lawyer and trustee of the Salford Estate. I'm delighted to meet you, Miss uh, Baker. <laughs> I hope you didn't mind my crashing the party. I thought these two might need company. <clears throat> Isn't this a lovely old place, Glenda? Now, what do you like best? The fire. Now, I'm in love with them. Our host will appreciate your love of flowers, Miss Lansdowne. Ah, here he is. Uh, Dr. Manetta, let me introduce Miss Lansdowne, Miss Baker, and Mr. Martin. Welcome, my friend. This is a great day for me. I cannot remember when last I entertained. I live here almost like a hermit. Well, I hope our cook has not forgotten how to prepare a good dinner. She has been so long without practice. <laughs> uh, Caller! Yes, sir? Take the bags upstairs. The housekeeper will tell you where everything goes. Miss Lansdowne's been admiring your azaleas. Oh, so you like flowers, huh? Mm, adore them, but don't all women? Uh, beautiful women and beautiful flowers have much in common. Their purpose is to brighten an otherwise dreary world. <laughs> well, as soon as you have seen your rooms and changed, I will have cocktails ready for you. Well, if you're fixing them in the surgery, Doc, make mine an arsenic straight. You are an American, huh? No, I'm from Ontario. June from Quebec. Uh, a French-Canadian. Sort of, by adoption. I was in Canada once. There was a revolution in my country, and my sympathies being anti-rebel, I repaired to a country where they would not worry about my politics. I'll take those. You stick around. I want a private talk with you presently. I'm more perturbed than ever. Uh, dinner will be ready in half an hour. My cook is a stickler for punctuality. Uh, tell me, my man. Well, excuse me, please. Craig, I am afraid, is dumb. Is there anything I can do for you? Uh, no, thanks. Uh, Craig was the unfortunate victim of rebel atrocities. He uh, lost his tongue. Is that so? What did you say? What was it you wanted to talk to me about? I've been down to the tomb, and as far as I can tell, nothing's been disturbed. But at any rate, everything's still locked. And Dr. Mineta says that he's sure that nobody's been near it in ages. But I'm very uneasy. Which room did you say? Oh. Do you think he was listening? I don't know. But you see, Foster the clerk who had charge of the keys was recommended by Dr. Manetta. My main recreation? Well, music upon what I would do with my spare time if I had any. My patients are poor but numerous, but they are quite unique. They always pay their accounts promptly. <laughs> Dr. Manetta has a great reputation which extends far beyond the county borders. It's lucky that his patients are honest, because he'd never send them any bills. No, 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 there you are wrong, my friend. Even a country doctor must live. Money means nothing to me, but it seems to be an obsession with my tradespeople. <laughs> if I can manage a meal a day and two pairs of stockings, that's all I ask. Just as long as she's got a few fur coats on the side. <laughs> <laughs> like myself, you are a simple soul. I'm quite sure we are the happiest. Dr. Mineta has quite a number of visitors who are not patients. They come to see his weird collection. What do you collect, Doctor? Instruments of torture. 
Is Mr. Havelock joking? Oh, no, 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 no. I think I ought to explain that my interest is purely antiquarian, although perhaps I have a slight personal interest. Oh, what is that? I am Spanish by descent. My family claim as one of their ancestors the famous, or perhaps I should say the infamous, Thomas de Torquemada. Now, what do I know about him? Wasn't he the Grand Inquisitor? Correct. He reduced torture to a fine art. Barbarism. It served its purpose. You're surely not attempting to justify its use. Why not? The devil, Martin, it's a trap. He's only arguing for the sake of argument. Nevertheless, I'd like to hear the case for torture. It was based on the principle that only the guilty had anything to confess. Yes, but that's basically unsound. There is such a thing, you know, as a false confession. True, you have discovered the flaw in the argument. Frequently, the innocent confessed to sins of which they were not guilty, while many a true heretic suffered martyrdom in silence. Well, I'm glad we're living in a more enlightened age. I wonder if we are. Tomorrow, you must visit my little collection. It is a queer collection, both ancient and modern. Does it include the dentist, Drill? <laughs> <laughs> well, shall we take coffee in the hall? Why doesn't your client ever come home to this lovely place? I'm afraid I can't answer that question, except by suggesting that he's a crazy young man with more money than sense. Tombs and torture chambers. Don't they have any simple pastimes in this place? Or well, maybe we can get the doctor to stage us a little public execution. Stay here for a hundred years, couldn't you, June? Oh, so that's the way it is, huh? Well, the storm is over and the moon is up. Oh, bravo. You must be a genius to conjure music out of that old crock. <laughs> well, the moon's up. What about looking at the tomb? I couldn't think of a more romantic idea. I understood that you all wish to visit the tomb. <laughs> Not me. If I go calling on corpses, I generally pick a sunny day for it. Oh, please forgive me, but I've just remembered that I have to visit a patient. So I shall not be able to accompany you to the tomb. Uh, Havelock will show you the way. I'm overdue already. I shall be waiting to join you in a game of Baccarat when you return. Excuse me. Como este to este? Not chimney, carido muido. I don't like any of this business. I, I wish I was out of it. Well, they've arrived. We saw them. What do you want us for? The girl went to see Havelock. He discovered he had lost the Selford keys. Mr. Martin was interested. Well, what about it? What does he know, anyway? Oh, nothing very much, but he is an inquisitive young man. He may prove a nuisance to us. What have we got to worry about? He can't do anything about Silver until he's a body to prove her. Well, he can't open the tomb without the key. Anyway, the girl isn't a beneficiary as long as young John's alive. Just the same, for your own safety, you must get back the key. There's another matter to discuss. Our share out is overdue. Oh, don't you worry about that. You'll get the money. Meanwhile, we have six keys between us. And the girl has the seventh. And the girl has the seventh. But we must be gentle with her. She plays Chopin divinely. Is that so? You've been here before, haven't you, Mr. Havelock? Yes, I was here this afternoon. Are you sure you won't come to the tomb, Miss Baker? Mm, no, thanks. If I want any dinners, I'll get them out of a bottle. <laughs> I believe your old family bury themselves in grand style. Yes, when the death duties allow. <laughs> uh, could I please have a gin and dinner? I need a gin and... Oh, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> Is it far? No, to the left of the mill house where the doctor keeps his torture gadgets. He's a queer chap, my neighbor. I think he's rather jolly. Yes, so we bring the poisoner. Yes, 
carry out. Careful, Blake, too late. Well, it's open. That's strange. I'm sure it's closed when I was here this afternoon. Don't block it. Stand your torch down here a moment, will you? Hmm? Well, yeah. Fire mark. Has any large car or van been around here recently? Well, I think it's very improbable. Voila. Run the cribbies home to the cottage. I think you can get to the house. Come on, let's go inside. I don't understand those marks. Something queer is going on here. Of nicer ways to spend the evening. Some nightclubs are not much better. There have been people here recently. A woman among them. But the gate's always kept locked. Well, we found it open. True, and I can't explain that. Where's this door with the seven locks? Uh, down here at the end. Certain this door hasn't been opened for several years. Can you stick a moment with something else? Was not careful of phrase, someone might wake him up. I've explained to you that he's had the family jewels put in there with him. Don't ask me why. His will dictates that they're to be given to John's bride on her wedding day. If these hadn't been stolen, how many would we have had? Certain with Miss Lansdowne. Well, with your permission, I'd like to try this one. Certainly, if you do. If your family heirlooms have been stolen, then it's a matter for the police. Ah, that's the one. The spring lock. Well, even if they hadn't, I'd have no right to probe in there. As prospective heiress, Miss Lansdowne, what are your wishes? Silver knew something about that tomb that caused his death. I'd hate to disturb the family ghost, but I should like to know what it was. I think you'd be wise to dump your responsibilities on the public trustee. It's not too late to do it now. And from what I've seen and heard, I can advise it. Well, it's locked. How did that happen? Perhaps it's the wind. No, it couldn't possibly have been that. I told you it was self-locking. Oh, there's a lock to the other side. We'll try again. No good, it's locked all right. Here's the key. Well, if we're going to stay here all night, I need a toothbrush. You're not scared, are you? <laughs> Frankly, I am. I feel sure that some malignant forces are working against us. in the morgues. What are you doing? The man went through the trees into the bushes. I wonder where his bullet went. I think it'll tell us who killed Silver and a lot of other things we want to know. Struck over here, I heard it. Oh. 
Beppo, Beppo, Beppo. I looked all around, sir. But he was on my shoulder until he jumped into the bushes. Oh, don't stand and gape. Go and find him. Beppo. Beppo. Well, sweetie, I think we owe you quite a lot. Mr. Martin, murder's been attempted. What do you propose to do about it as a police officer? I am a private citizen, Mr. Havelock, and as such, I prefer to do precisely nothing. What? The keys stolen and murder attempted and you propose to do nothing at all? Only for tonight. Tomorrow I may do quite a lot. But we may never see tomorrow. Now, Mr. Havelock, don't spoil my lovely evening. <coughs> Beppo, Beppo, Beppo. Is he the uh, German government? Oh, no, no. He is just my little monkey. A lonely man's only friend. But he is somewhere. He was on my shoulder, and then he jumped into the bushes. Glenda, we got lost into the tombs. A mere accident. We um, lost the key. And your little monkey found it for us. Yes. He's very clever. But he has his stupid moments. Uh, someday, when my patients either desert me or die, I am thinking of opening my little collection to the public. After what happened last night, I can't help feeling that our presence here is far from welcome. Havelock seems to think that Manette is in some scheme to rob the tomb. For the jewels? Yes. Do you know, I'm beginning to believe that there's more in this business than just the mere theft of a few family heirlooms. You suspect Manette? On facts, no. On his looks? Oh, why not? So here we are. Now, that is a collection of poisoned drinking cups. This one belonged to Lucrezia Borgia. You'll have to take my word for it. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, I'll show you something else. Rose leg shackles are 18th century. And what's that? This was called the vagrant mask. It was fitted over the victim's head. This part was pressed against the eye. Then it was screwed up tightly. I leave the rest to your imagination. Sweet little collection, isn't it? Yes, I think I'm going to stick to cigarette pictures. What's the stage show for? A page of history. Not Magna Carta. <laughs> no, it is the Inquisition in session. It is reconstructed from an incident in which my own family took part. Not as the victim. I also have a choice collection of branding irons. Yes, we could do with some of those at the yard. Some people are most reluctant to talk. Ah, for that, I recommend this. The Iron Maiden of Toledo, a great favorite of Ferdinand of Castile. She was the Queen of Terrors in 1484. An original, preserved for over 400 years. She looks quite charming to me. Yes, I always distrust charming women on principle. Oh, you are so right. Let me show you something. Would you like to play the part of the victim? Well, here. <laughs> the Iron Maiden was no angel, I assure you. And if the victim hadn't confessed by the time the knives descended, he kept his secret for good. be a swell thing for making backward guys propose. <laughs> they showed great imagination. Don't you agree? I smell coffee. Glenda, aren't you going to join us? No. The doctor has shown us his anger on Oh. Fragrance has been in the wars. What do you mean? Is it a new band?
Andy done his bit? Yeah. Listen. I've seen something odd in that place. Odd? <laughs> I can think of a better word. No, no, I mean something that struck me particularly as being odd. Did I ever tell you about that picture in Silver's room in the nursing home? No. Well, I didn't realize at the time what it represented. Now I know what it was. Hmm? It was a picture of a Spanish priest, an inquisitor. And I've just seen it in that old mill. Or an exact copy. Well, that's funny, because it certainly wasn't in the nursing home when Sneed searched the place. The Meta must have been connected with that nursing home. Well, it was he that recommended the clerk Foster to Havelock. Do you think it's possible that Manetta murdered the heir? My dear. In quick Spanish. Did you mean it was he you shot at? It could have been. But who's going to tell us he can't? Hello. Telegram? Who for? Martin. All right. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I'll read it back to you. Can you come yard today? Discuss case as friend. Have some news for you. Regards, Andy. Received 11.15 a.m. Goodbye. Right. Thank you. Havelock's coming to town with me. I'll be back in the morning. You know, I hate leaving you. No, we'll be all right. This isn't the Victorian age, you know. No, you get me wrong. I mean, I don't like leaving you. Oh. Well, you'll be back in the morning. Yes, and when I do come back, I may have something to tell you. Can't you tell me now? No, time and place are all wrong. Oh, it can't be very important. Oh, yes, it is. It's the most important thing of all. Ready, Martin? Yes, coming. You'll take care of yourself, won't you? I told you. I love adventure. Yes, I'm beginning to wish cooking had won when you tossed that coin. Oh, those letters of John Selford's, can I see them? Yes, I'll drop off at my office and bring them over. I hope you're right about Manetta. I'm sure I am. If Manetta's in this, he won't dare come out into the open, so we need not worry about Miss Lansdowne or her friends. June's all right. She can take care of herself. Well? Manetta and the Codys are in some racket together. They bumped Silver and disposed of the body. They're playing that. Now what? I was just coming to that. A woman who lives opposite the nursing home notices a plain van outside the place on the night the Lansdowne girl is there. Well, why the devil didn't you tell me that before? You didn't ask me. Listen, Andy. I was down at the Selford Vault last night. And in the mud outside, there were the tire marks of a large car. A van, probably. The van your Mrs. Watson saw. Andy, the solution of Silver's disappearance is in that tomb. Probably. Now, listen. June and Havelock were with me. Somebody locked us in that tomb and started a shooting match. I found the slug. I've got it here. I see. I should say that it had been fired through a 38 auto. I'll get the expert to check up. Come in. Mr. Havelock, sir. You've been very quick. Yes, I don't want to waste time. This affair is getting on my nerves. Oh, this is Inspector Sneed. I shall. You'll have to excuse him. He's never conscious till after lunch. I've uh, brought the Selford letters. Uh, just a few of the more recent ones. Well, that's fine. You certain the letters were from John Selford? Oh, positive. Uh, though I've not seen him for some time. I know his handwriting. When did you last see him? Oh, about uh, four years ago. He hasn't been home since. No, uh, not to my knowledge. Doesn't that strike you as being a bit odd? Yes, but then I know his idiosyncrasies. I-D-I-O-S-Y-N-C-R-A-C-I-E-S. -E uh, yes, Mr. Havelock? You must realize, Martin, that I have no right to prevent a man of 21 from seeing the world on his own money. 
Besides, as I've told you, his health isn't at all good. He needs sunshine. What's wrong with him? Paralysis of the right hand. P-A-R-A... -A. I know, I know. So he's left-handed. Completely. Have you come to any conclusions? We um, have certain theories. I hope you'll get the matter straightened out. It's most worrying. If there's any way that I can help you, I should... Well, uh, if you'll let us do the worrying, sir. In the meantime, will you look after this key for me? Well, I'd much rather not have the responsibility. I wish you would, sir. Inspector Sneed and I are returning to Selford in the morning, and I think it will be safer in your keeping. Are you uh, expecting trouble? Well, you never know. Well, I shall be at my office if you want me. Good morning, Inspector. He's worn out. He's been awake all the morning. What matter with you? Concentrating again? Self is left-handed. That ought to help. Well, what about these letters? I'll have them sent down to the handwriting expert. I'll take them down there myself. I thought he is still at Dolphin Street. Yes. D-O-L-F-I-N. The writer of these was a young man of 30 to 35. Anything else? Yes. The paper was manufactured in England, but a lot of it finds its way abroad. One thing more. Which hand were they written with? The right. The right? Listen, Andy. I'm on to something big. Those letters were written with a right hand, and John Selford's right hand is paralyzed. You'll have to miss your beauty sleep. You're coming down to Selford with me tonight. Nice sleep. Oh, I should say not. I've been working hard. Look. Miles too big. It'll never fit, Harry. I've changed my mind. I'm making it for somebody else. Who? Cornelius. You know, that nice detective friend of Dick's. Oh. <laughs> for Pete's sake, what's happening? Look! Look where Paul's got it. Hey, Monk, come down here. Oh, look at him now. Beppo, come down here at once. Beppo, come down here. Come on, little Beppo, come to Nancy. Be careful. Ah, Beppo. Talk about a bull in the china shop. Beppo, come down, Beppo. Beppo, come down here at once. If he doesn't stop soon, there won't be any jumper for Cornelius. Oh, look at him now. Hey, Monk, come down here. Or perhaps he doesn't understand English. Be careful. Look, I've seen it before. No, not this one. Now, let's get this straight. You had a key. I gave it to Dick. So what? This may be one of those stolen from Havelock. You mean the doctor pinched them? Well, he may know who did. Well, why should he be mixed up in it? For half a million pounds, a self for jewels, maybe. I'm going to telephone Dick. Well, there's the phone. No, not from here. I'm suspicious of everybody now. Well, Dick said he'd be back in the morning. I want to tell him right away. I'm going to phone from the village. I guess I'll make him a pair of socks instead. Well, what did she find? So. What's up? Beppo unearthed one of the keys. The girl has it. Craig saw it in her hand. You must get it back. Where is she? I saw her going towards the road. It looked as if she was off to the village. Better still, we don't want any trouble here. You must get the car out and follow her. She mustn't reach the village. Take her to the cottage, you understand? My job's writing, not kidnapping. I advise you not to argue. It frays my nerves.
figure in here. Get a knife on the head. I'll attend to her. The girl's here. Give me a drink, will you? I'd rest if I were you. I'll get you a sedative. She's had an accident. She's been unfortunate. Again. Wait! Oh, is she all right? Yeah, she feels thirsty. So do you, evidently. I'm going to get her a sedative. Did you get the keys? Yes. Well, let's have it. I've got to get back. The governor will be waiting. She's not getting it. But why not? What's the idea? Come on, hand it over. Take it easy. Manessa owes us money. Is that right, Bevan? Yes. Our share is overdue. We should have had it three weeks ago. Well, we'll hold this and the girl till he comes across. You can't do it. The girl will be reported missing and the cops will cover this place like an epidemic. That is up to Manetta. If he moves fast, he can save us all a lot of unpleasantness. Call him up. Kidnapping, blackmail. What's going to happen next? Mud compulsory. Tell him to come over. With the money. Hello. Is that you, Doctor? Yes. This is Dr. Manetta speaking. <laughs> uh, how is the patient? Don't you understand, Doctor? This is Cody, Manetta. We've got the key. We were keeping it till we get our split. I will come and see the patient at once. One of my patients is very, very ill. I'm afraid I shall have to leave you. Oh, just as we were beginning to get acquainted, too. That is one of the drawbacks of my profession. Excuse me, please. It's my guess that John Selford's been murdered. Or he's being held captive by Manetta and Company. Someone, probably Cody, is cashing the checks abroad. Manetta's managing the forging business from this end and sending the letters to Cody so that he can post them to Havelock. See? I heard you. Well, we'll see what the tomb uncovers. Well, how do you like it? I'm not crazy about it. Oh, are you nervous? I'll let you know if I want you to hold my hand. Plenty of them. Yes, yeah, there are quite a few generations boxed up here. Say, hey, this one looks interesting. Give me a hand, Andy. They did a job in a hurry. Who's the loose? Caught Andy. Silver? Yes. From the description June Lansdowne gave me. It's the one we've got at the yard, too. Andy, we've got enough evidence to pin this on Manetta. I doubt it. Where's your motive? Silver had to be silent. He sent for June Lansdowne to tell her what happened to John Selford. But he was shot before he could speak. Right. 
Got a question for Nedda? No, Andy, I want you to hold your hand. There's still a lot in this business we know nothing about. Is that the door? Yes. That's where the real mystery lies. Come on, let's go. I'll be glad to. This place will keep me awake tonight. Hello, Glenda. Where's everybody? Thank heavens you're here at last. I'm scared stiff. Oh, don't worry. Here's Cornelius to comfort you. Where's June? She went out to phone you. She found another one of those keys. And she didn't want to phone from here, so she went to the village. Is Manetta in? No, he went out a while back to visit one of his patients. That dumb servant's gone, too. Gee, am I glad to see you two. Does Manetta know that June's got that key? I don't know. There's your girlfriend. Don't be vulgar. And take your hat off. Hello. Who? Oh, Mr. Havelock. Here's Martin here. Well, look here, Martin. I'm at my office, and a letter arrived this morning from Lord Stelter. What, another one? In the same handwriting? Yeah, and he's on his way to Stelter's Manor. He's back in England. He'll be there at about 8 o'clock. Just 20 minutes. Uh-huh, and I'm coming down in the morning. But... Hello? Oh, nothing. Goodbye. Did he say Selford was turning up? Yes, about eight o'clock. Live after all, huh? Yes, so it seems. <laughs> Gosh, I, I feel like a man who's been walking in one direction and then suddenly finds himself going in the other. Ever experienced it? Walking? Not me. And I'd got everything set. Forged letters, visits of Cody abroad, changing of the checks, everything. And now Selford's got to turn up and explain it all. There's one thing you'll never be able to explain. Oh, and what's that? The murder of Silver. That's one for Manetta. Yeah, well, that's busted now because there's no motive. It can't be wrong. It can't be. Well, while you're arguing the finer points of justice, how about June? Well, I'm going to wait until Selford arrives, and if she hasn't turned up by then, I'll go down to the village and look for her. No. She must have had a heavy blow. Concussion, probably. What's the game? Better scare me. The matter. Well, go on, let him in. I am sorry to have kept you waiting, but when I received your pressing invitation, my car was not available. Well, I hope you have decided to adopt a more reasonable attitude. Where's the money? <laughs> My dear Cody, did you imagine I carry a sum like that in loose cash? When do we get it? Shall we say tomorrow? All right, but no later. That's better. I knew you would be sensible about it, Anne. <sighs> Collar, open that window. It is like an oven in here. And now may I trouble you for the key? Oh, no. Tomorrow in return for the money. I must have it at once. What's the hurry? We are opening the tomb tonight. Your what? And I shall also require the other two keys in your possession. had a right to be consulted about any change of plans. There's no time. The police know too much already. Unless we move quickly, they will ferret out the whole story. You're bluffing. The police won't find out the truth unless they open the tomb. And they'll need dynamite to do that. 
No, Manetta, we'll keep the key. Really, Anne, you are being as stupid as your husband. Get out! Do you want to wait for go? You refuse to give up the key? Until we're paid, yes. Then we'll return yours. We're not parting with ours. They're too good a security. You're both being very unwise. No, stop! Oh. You'll, you'll never get away with this, Brunetta. Pull yourself together, you fool. Get the key. I'll have yours, too. Take the blasted thing. I'm through with the whole rotten business anyway. I'm getting out. That is where you are mistaken. Drive to the vault. Craig knows what to do when you get there. I'll follow in Cody's car. What about the girl? I'll look after her. Hurry, hurry! Good evening. May I introduce myself? I'm John Telford. Dr. Manetta is expecting me. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, my, my name's Martin. I'm a friend of the doctor's. How do you do? I, I'm afraid the doctor's not expecting you here this evening. But I wrote to Havelock, my solicitor. Oh, yes, I know. Unfortunately, the doctor was out when Mr. Havelock called, and I, I took the message myself. Then you'll be very surprised when he sees me here. It's many years since I've been home. Yes, I, I wonder you spend so much of your time abroad when you've got such a lovely place as this. I'm afraid I have to. Doctor's orders, you know. Oh, Glenda. Um, this is Lord Selford. How do you do? Hiya. How do you do? This is my friend uh, Cornelius Sneed. How do you do? I, uh, I travel a lot. You see, I'm debarred from most of the social activities of the country. My arm makes things a little difficult. Yes, you must find it a great handicap. Oh, one gets used to it. We spend quite a time admiring your beautiful possessions. Yes, they must have cost a packet. Some very fine pieces of uh, porcelain. That, um, that vase, for instance. Hmm? Well, my father was a very ardent collector, but that, I imagine, belongs to Dr. Manetta. I don't ever remember seeing it before. Exquisite piece, don't you think so, Cornelius? Yes, Chinese, I should think. Um, yes, probably about Ming. No, much earlier than that. Oh, no, no, Ming. Now, look at the marking. Yeah, that's no proof. It's the design that matters. Design my foot. Uh, what do you say, Lord Selford? Well, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, no, of course not. Here, catch. <coughs> what the devil does this mean? Well, caught, Lord Selford. Why? If he's Lord Selford, I'm Mary, Queen of Scots. Good work, Martin. Take these things off. Not until you explain how that paralyzed arm of yours came to life so suddenly. 
And the first time I meet a real lord, he turns out to be a phony. <laughs> Don't you give me the horse laugh, you ape. Hello. Here, hello. Give me the nearest police station. Yes, how about June? As soon as the police arrive, I'm going to organize a search. Do you think that... I don't want to think. Hi! Stop! I say! Please, stop! Hi! Please, stop! Well, thank you. I want to go to Salford Manor, but I'm not quite sure which way. I'm very grateful to you. I lost my way. I said I lost my way. But fortunately, I found you. Where's Miss... Well, if my eyes don't deceive me, that's a 38 auto. Remember, Andy? Boy, oh boy, now we're getting somewhere. Tom Fowler. Know him? Sure, he's one of the best penmen in the business. Forger, eh? Yes, there's the answer to your self at letters. Where's Miss Lansdowne? Get off, Andy, I'll make him talk. Hey, many a backroom method. All right, I'll tell you everything. It'll help me, won't it? Depends what you got to say. My neighbor's got the girl. She was at Cody's. I took her there. Where's that? About two miles away. But they'll have left by now. Answer, Gender. That'll be the police. Go on, I'll keep an eye on the one-armed wonder. Where was Manetta going? To the tomb. That's where you'll find it, Inspector. At the tomb. The tomb? Manetta. I got you covered. Look out! Self-defense. Havelock. The lawyer. That one for the book. So he was in it too. I wonder what he came here for. To get this out of the tomb. I think this is going to tell us all we want to know. Looks like a death certificate. It is. Who? Young John Selfords. Andy, he died when he was 11 years of age. 11 years ago. So this is the secret of the door with the seven locks. So you were right. And all that time, Havelock and co. were milking the estate and sending that young stooge abroad to collect the money. Incidentally, I wonder who he is. Yeah, give me the light a moment. Look, the names are all here. Havelock, Cody's Silver Caller. It's made out by Manetta. That's funny. I wonder why they all signed the certificate. That's what Manetta's going to tell us.
go and get your police to look after the body. I'm going after Manetta. I think I know where I can find him. Richard! Doctor, I can save you the trouble of going to the tomb. There is a way of going there, won't you? You seem to know a great deal about my movement. You'd be surprised just how much I have learned since your uh, partner, Mr. Havelock, opened the tomb. I congratulate you. Where's Miss Lansdowne? Oh, no, 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 please, Mr. Martin, surely. As a detective, it is your job to find that out. That's exactly what I'm going to do. in the corner. You know very well the police can't use those methods. I'm not in the police. I resign. Come on, Manetta. Where's Miss Lansdowne? We're charging you with murder, so you Wait might... Wait a minute. Let's make this official. Dr. Manetta, I arrest you on a charge of having been concerned with the late Edward Havelock in the murder of Edward Silver. On or about... Let us take the usual warnings for granted. So, Havelock is dead. He was shot resisting arrest. A weak fool, our friend Havelock, but we made good use of him. Where's Miss Lansdowne? Let us take the facts in the order of their importance. I quite understand your anxiety, Mr. Martin. Tell me first what you discovered in the tomb. This. What's it mean? Our joint confession of guilt. Lear was murdered. No, John Selford died from natural causes. The people that signed that document were the only ones that knew of his death. They were well paid to hold their tongue. By Havelock? Havelock, as executor of the estate, provided the money. But the whole scheme was mine. Why was the certificate put there? As an insurance against double dealing. Also, each member of the syndicate was given one of the seven keys. Here they are. I 
got them back from Havelock when the tomb was open. You found Silver's body in the vault? Yes, and you will find the Cody's there, too. A suitable place for the dead, don't you agree? Who were the Cody's? Small fry that had to be liquidated. Triple murder, eh? Well, the penalty for three is no greater than for one. Craig did the killing. He had quite a flair for it. The so-called heir? Avalok's he? son. But he told me he was dead years ago. It was John Selford who died. From then on, Havelock took his place. An impersonation he carried out very successfully. Until tonight. Let's see. Any more questions, gentlemen? Yes. What about the Selford jewels? Intact. Too difficult to dispose of. Miss Lansdowne's an inheritor. Also, the remainder of the estate. I think she will find we have left her enough to satisfy a few simple questions. I keep it, Mr. Martin, as a memento. It was a poison cup that once belonged to the student. Unless the liquid I have released has lost some of its potency. My presence here is a matter of seconds. Where is Miss Lansdowne? Where is she? I gave you your secret. Manetta! Too late. What do you mean, Andy? You heard what he said? Give me the answer. I'd be glad to see the bright lights again. Well, I guess this is one car ride I won't have to walk home from. Hey, wake up. You know, if you were a poor girl and deserving, I'd marry you. I think so much of that, Arthur. I'll give the money away to Glenda. Oh, that's different. <laughs> <gasps> I thought you liked living dangerously. Can't a lady change her mind? Mm -hmm. 